Hey everybody, it's Abe Duque here again. I'm here with a short video. I Something I've been wanting to talk to you guys about for a while now. It's about the way that we see Ableton when we first install it. Now you'd think you'd get a pretty good template set up. It's not horrible, but it's actually horrible in certain uh, ways. Let me just tell you what I'm talking about. So you just installed Ableton and you're looking at the, your screen here and you have uh, four tracks, two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks. Uh, that's okay. Um, the truth is I don't really like to see uh, too many tracks when I first start out. And maybe I'd like to see one mini and one audio track. Uh, and, and that's okay. That's well and good. And you know, and there's all sorts of other parameters that you can go ahead and, and adjust and, and save as a default. Uh, so there's your, you know, your, your metronome settings. You could choose the sound of the metronome you want. You could choose the, you know, the global quantized browser with, with the setting for that's going to be you know this is all uh, interesting that the tempo that you might, you might like to work at you know 110 or 150 depending on what type of music you're making um, that's all well and good uh, let's set it to something whatever uh, 120 for now um, these things are, are things that, that are really nice to set up and then you know kind of leave there for the next time around and what you can do now is then go ahead to your uh, preferences under file and save current set as default and that's great uh, and if that would be the end of the video this would be a pretty bad video but the the thing that really gets me about the way that Ableton gives you Ableton when you first open it up is the way that these effects are set up it, especially uh, when it comes to the reverb let's look at the delay it gives you you know return effects are uh, are, are awesome and they're great to use and of course using a delay and a reverb in a, in a return uh, setting is actually ideal. I mean you really don't want to use just a chorus or an EQ or a compressor in a, in a uh, return setting. Uh, it it kind of lends itself for uh, effects with tails on them like reverb and delay. Uh, but let's see, let's look at this, this delay setting. You, you have a, a delay setting that's set to 3 16th notes, both uh, left and right are set to 3 16th notes. So let me just grab some audio from in here, one of the packs, and just play with that. Drop this in here. And I'm going to draw, send some of this B to the delay, which is set to 3 16th notes. And it's kind of a mono delay that's not that interesting. So I like to stagger my delays and to make them a little shorter, I like to set it to, let's say, uh, 1 16th note and a second 16th note. And then you have a more interesting setup. Maybe even, you know, change, move forward or back in timing to give you a more interesting uh, setup on this, on this uh, delay. So, now we have a little bit more of an interesting delay to start out the game with. What this does, for me at least, is that it gives me a little more inspiration when I'm playing with the, with the material. It immediately gets me into like you know some fun in games. When I'm set up with just a 3 16th note delay, eh, what would even be better if it's you grab some of these sexier delays, like let's say the ping pong delay. So this thing, and then get to that. Again, a shorter time. You can set the filter where you want it to be set. I like to set a higher feedback. Of course, if it's in a if it's in a return setting, you want to have it uh, the wet all the way up. So one of the things you might want to do is actually switch out the delay. There's not only the simple delay in there. Uh, you might want to have something like uh, the ping pong delay. And that might be a, a, an interesting choice. Um, another choice could be even better than that for me is one of my favorite new things in Ableton 10, which is uh, the Echo device. Let's grab the Dub Syndicate one. And let's go ahead and use that in there. And that's super cool. I mean, it's peaking right now. Right now we're in the red and we shouldn't really be in the red. Um, we should have the wet all the way up. And you know, if you wanna save yourself from any of that embarrassment, uh, 
that means getting into the red, you might want to just uh, drop a limiter in there, which uh, will just be that. So you can go nuts with it and have it not, you know, peek out. Now, that was in the master that was peeking out just because I'm, you know, I could be a little low with everything here. But that's a pretty cool and much sexier sort of uh, situation. Now you could play with all this stuff, set it how you like, and then save it. And the point of this video is to say that, you know, you don't have to accept what Ableton gives you to start out with. It actually is pretty uninspiring, the settings that they have on their, um, on their delays. And let's look at the reverb, which is about the same situation, maybe even a little worse. They have something here, and I don't know what, this has been the same and when you installed Ableton 9, it was the same. It would, it would come in with this uh, reflection all the way up at 6 dB and the diffusion network uh, at, at closer to zero, which means that the, the pre-delay, uh, the first part of the, you know, of the algorithmic reverb here would actually be louder. So the beginning of the reverb sound would be louder than the end of the reverb sound, which is a little bit weird. It never really presents itself like that in, in most reverbs that you get. They most, more or less start out like being, you know, about the same, and then you kind of work, you know, up and down from there. So it's not really a, a good place to start. I would go ahead and go to high quality. Why not? I mean, come on, really? We do have to, I mean, in the days when, when our computers were begging for CPU uh, power, um, you know, that was a different story. You know, a couple of reverbs in Ableton 5, back in the days when I was using Ableton, uh, would, uh, would already choke up the computer, but these days it really doesn't mean that much. So I'm just keeping high quality. And this this is uh, this diffusion network filter setup. It's like set up so that only like some of these highs are coming through. Maybe that's interesting. Maybe not. Um, let's see what this sounds like. Let's get a little bit something that's going to universally more be more inspiring for me. Like that. Maybe a little more decay, maybe a little more stereo, more Haas effect going on in there. Now it's again exaggerated, but a lot better than what you had before. And you can play with this. You can go on forever just playing with this. I could drive a phaser at the end of this reverb, for example, so that I could, you know, get some of that action going. And create all sorts of fun and sexy things here, uh, but the, I guess the the moral of the story is that you don't have to have what Ableton gives you. You can go ahead and uh, save it. So if you just uh, hit Command comma, you can go to the uh, file uh, folder as we uh, did before and save uh, current set as default. Hit save, and boom, there you have it. So from now on, have a look. And if you haven't done this before open up a new session, and go ahead and set it up the way you'd like to see it every time you'd want to have uh, Ableton going on for a new project, and then save it. And then from that point on, you'll be a lot more inspired every time you start your job. This is Abe, again for 343 Labs. Hope this was helpful. Have a nice day. You can take courses with Abe Duque here at 343 Labs. 343 Labs is an electronic music school and community in downtown Manhattan. We offer courses for all levels of learning electronic music production, with course topics including Ableton Live, Logic, Synthesis for Music Producers, Songwriting and Music Theory, and more. To learn more about 343 Labs, head to 343labs.com. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for more tutorials with our instructors, master classes, and content from our electronic music community.